Welcome to our podcast. My name is Danny and I'm the headmaster here at the British Online School. We're an online platform offering students and parents consistency that they need with their education, journeys in certain times and beyond. We do this by using the modern technologies and combining with the traditional teaching techniques to make sure all students can continue their progress with education and be successful in anything they choose to be. Today, we'll be discussing education and football with Azmir Begovic, the Everton goalkeeper. Azmir, I'm very pleased to be talking to you today on the British Online School podcast. I'm a huge Pompey fan and a big follow of the Premier League, and your career has spanned some fantastic clubs, including Portsmouth, as well as Chelsea, Bournemouth, AC Milan, and now currently at Everton, to name a few. And throughout your entire career, it seems you have been the national number one for Bosnia and Herzegovina. And then on top of all of that, you once held the record as well for the longest goal scored in football. Once again, thank you for joining us on our podcast today. It's an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Excellent. Well, before we go into your career and talk about your education, I would like to start off talking to you about that goal. Okay. How did it feel when you scored that goal? I mean, at what point after kicking that ball did you think, that's in, that's going in? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, thank you so much for bringing, uh, bringing that up. It's always a nice memory to, to, um, to talk about and obviously reminisce about. And for me, um, when I look back at it, to be honest with you, I didn't realize it was going in until it went in. I, I have to say, I, I never would have expected for it to go in. I would never expect it to score a goal in that that sort of manner. Um, so the fact that when it went in, I was I was just as shocked as anybody. But now as time goes on, obviously it's it's so rare and um, you know incredibly happy to be part of the history books. See, so coming from a Portsmouth background, scoring against Southampton must have been um, an extra big um, shot in the arm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we went down well with the Pompey fans, that's for sure. Oh, brilliant. Brilliant. Okay, so you have played through for some massive teams throughout your career. Again, you've had over 60 appearances for your international team as well. And so you've even been voted as the 2012 Bosnia Footballer of the Year. So that, you have had a lot of pressure on your shoulders, especially being a goalkeeper as well, because I'm sure you can feel very isolated in that position. So can you explain to our audience, and particularly the students listening, how do you handle that pressure that's on you? Whether it's the first match, the last match, is there any difference in the way you approach it and feel that pressure? It's, it's a great question. It's a great question. I mean, one of the biggest things um, that I would say comes, comes with life experience and everything. So the pressure is there. We can't ignore it. We can't take it away. Um, sometimes more, sometimes less, depending on the games and the circumstance and situation. Um, and to be honest with you, I've been able to deal with it a lot more as I've been older. When I was younger, when I was so consumed with everything that was going on and some of these extra uh, external factors, um, I wasn't able to really channel it into my performance. Whereas as, as you get older, you know, maybe you, 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 you get married or you have a, your partner, um, you have kids, you do this a lot more. Now, you know, having played hundreds and hundreds of games, it's, it's a lot easier for me to be able to process what I need to do, how I need to prepare, be consistent with my approach. And that's, that's, one, that's one thing. And then second of all, you know, if I can go back, to my younger years now, I would say to myself, is just just to take everything in your stride, uh, control the controllables. Um, I know this a lot of, maybe sounds a bit cliche and everything else, but it really is. You know, you can only really control what you, you can do and the outside factors. That's why we love sport. You really quite never know what's going to happen. Nice. Um, so you've obviously had a very long football playing career um, and it's still going strong. Let's like, say you're at Everton at the moment. What's been your highlight throughout your football career? I guess the one, the one thing that really sticks out for me, I mean, you talk about all the debuts for teams. That's always important. Uh, Premier League debuts, that's very, very important. I guess the one thing that will always stick out is playing for Bosnia at the 2020, 2014 World Cup. Um, to be at our first major tournament as a country, to be part of a special group of players, for it to be in Brazil, playing against Leo Messi in Argentina. That, that was, for me, something I... Yeah, that, 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 that's what I put as my top top highlight in my career and something I'll, I'll always cherish. So after that fantastic memories that you've shared with us and your fantastic career, let's now look back at your education. 
Okay, so your education wasn't in the UK, so the majority of it was in Germany and Canada, and you also went to college in Portsmouth. How much of your time in that education system do you think helped become the player you are now? Now, I do always like to just point out here, if you don't think the education system helped you, I do like it to be honest. Whilst we are a school, we do understand not everything is learned whilst you are in school. So I'll ask just once again, how do you think the education system helped you become such a success in football? Well, you know, um, you know, I think education, first and foremost, is very important. Now, did it help me with my football and my technical skills? No, it didn't. 100%. That, that's my football training and everything I learned on the pitch. But where school was important and my parents always made sure my schoolwork was done to a to a reasonable, acceptable level. They wouldn't accept anything less before I did my sports. So what it did teach me was was commitment, taught me discipline, um, and it taught me to, you know, to accept responsibility. You know, you have to be on time for classes. You have to do your thing. So that went really hand in hand with with my football, you know. And then as I got older, as my football commitments became more, yeah, more important. Well, I wouldn't say more important, but obviously became bigger. Then I had to mix school and, 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 and football together, which was, you know, incredibly important for me because that's what I wanted to do is my dream. And I was lucky to have teachers and schools that were able to, you know, make sure that I was able to get all my schoolwork done, but also not lose out on any of my football trips or commitments. So from that point of view, school was school was important. I always want to do education. I do with my kids now. I, I preach education and, you know, I had to. I wouldn't have been able to be a professional footballer if I didn't get a certain level of schooling done. And that was the sort of deal I had with my parents. Um, and maybe as the years go on, you know, I've tried to get some qualifications and other things, and I maybe will go back and revisit some education courses in, in, in the future. You know, I don't think it's ever too late, but, you know, it's something that went hand in hand with my football, that's for sure. That's nice. And it sounds like you had quite supportive parents behind you there as well, just handy to get your work done as you can carry on football. But there was, was there a teacher that sort of stood out for you as well that really helped push your career towards football? Or was it something you always knew you wanted to do? Well, you know, it's, I mean, I had some really, really great teachers. I mean, I go back to the ones I remember, of course, uh, junior high school in, in Edmonton, Canada. Um, I had some fantastic teachers who were also coaches on the, on the football team. I remember a teacher called Mr. Duxbury. I had Mr. Fieri, who was my basketball coach coach also Mr. Freeman who did PE and volleyball so I remember a lot of my teachers you know they were they were always to make sure that there was a balance was right you know some of us kids who were incredibly passionate and about playing sports and were good at playing sports they never shied away from letting us do that but at the same time making sure that we were at our classes making sure that we we did our classes properly and our grades were at a certain level so like I said it, it goes hand in hand I don't think you can do one without the other I think to, to fo solely focus on, 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 on a sport and not, not do education, I think is wrong. And if you love sports, you know, you should also do that on top of your education because I think it gives you a really nice um, release from uh, the daily pressures of education. So I think overall, there's always important to find that balance. As you said, those teachers played a huge role in that, you know, to be quite flexible, but also be stern at the right times. Um, and then my parents were, you know, the, in the background doing the same thing. So you know, we're all molded by, by the people who are in our lives and the influences we have in our lives. And, you know, I was really lucky um, to be at some good schools and then, you know, have some good teachers. And then as I went into those more, I guess, very important years in my football, the 14, 15, 16 year old stage, when I actually went to a football academy in, in Edmonton and half the day was football and half the day was, was school. I think, I mean, you know, th those were priceless memories for me. Oh, very nice. So you're talking about schools there. Did you notice a difference in the educational systems as you went through the countries? Was there one country which you were in that you thought all oh, they they focused more on education, or was there another country that sort of focused more on your sport and could see your ability? Was there any difference in that? Well, you know, I can only really talk about my years in Canada. I I don't remember too much. Obviously, I was sort of in elementary school the first years in Germany and that's all a bit of a blur. But I also wasn't, my football commitments weren't at, you know, at any sort of important stage. So, you know, you go to, you know, elementary um, school and, and that's all you sort of do. And then you do a bit of training a couple nights a week. Um, so then when I went into Canada, I, I just remember it being, yeah, being really good. I mean, I, I settled in really well once I'd learned language, um, but the Canadian school system was, 
was very, very good. And like I said, I, I was appreciative of the fact that I was able to follow still my dreams in terms of sport, but do my education. And I thought that the teachers really had a good grasp of getting that balance right. What do you think there's one thing that you wish you were taught during school that you think would have maybe helped speed up your career or allowed you to be more successful quickly? So that's a good question. I mean, I, um, you know, I, I probably think now when it's funny, it's maybe it's, I don't know how relevant it is, but now when I go back and think of all the countries that I played in, um, all my international teammates I've played with, you know, I was able to learn a lot of languages through my life experiences, but I probably would have taken my language courses uh, a lot more serious. I did a bit of French, um, you know, maybe I would have taken Spanish and Italian because, you know, as you know, I was in Italy for a while and um, would have maybe loved to have a bit more of a background. So I thought languages for me is very important. I think communicating with people around the world, being able to um, mingle with everyone, networking, I thought that was really important. I thought languages is something that could be a lot more you know, when I was growing up, I, I, you know, I think the school system now make it mandatory to do a language. But, you know, when I was growing up, it was only an option. So he didn't have to do it. And I thought, you know, if that was probably a little bit more of a mandatory thing that I could have benefited from that. Right. Um, so we know you're obviously a very busy man. You're waiting to go off to train uh, for Everton um, and getting ready for the Premier League returning this weekend. So I'm going to ask you two final questions, if that's OK. The first one being, what is your fondest memory of your time at school? Fondest memory of my time at school? Um, you know, I think actually one of the things I'm quite proud of is that one of my, a couple of my coaches, um, especially at my soccer academy, you know, we're talking back uh, 16, 17 years ago now, you know, I'm still in touch with them and I still have contact with them and they still keep on, on um, you know, keep an eye on what, I, what I'm doing and how I'm doing. So I think those relationships are incredibly important. I think that, that that's one thing I'll take back. Of course, you learn, you know, life will teach you a lot of lessons. Education is incredibly important. But I think those relationships are priceless. Ah, oh, very nice. And one last question then. If you could pass on one piece of advice to any of the students, whether they're all the way down starting school for the very first time or those getting ready to leave college, what is one piece of advice would you like to pass on to all of them to help them get through their education? You know, the one thing I, I, I did do, and I guess, I guess I have to thank my parents for that, is that, that I committed to school every day. So whether it was my classes, whether it was being a good, good student for the teacher's sake, uh, whether it, it was being a good student for my fellow students, making friends, I think just to, just make the most of every day. You know, I, I had some great memories at school, whether, like I said, it was in class, it was out of class, whether it was sports, uh, school sports, whatever we did, um, I have some really great memories and I really enjoyed my school because I embraced it. You know, people, a lot of maybe kids, oh, why do I have to do it? You know, it's something that we all have to do, but, you know, why not, why not make it something that you, that you really enjoy and, and commit to rather than it being a chore? So I loved school. I try and make, send that same message to my own kids, you know, just to enjoy it. You don't put too much pressure on anything in specific, but just make the most of every day you're in school. Now, I did say one more question, but I can't let you go about asking you, what's the sort of vision for Everton this year? You've had a very positive start to the season. You've got a, a brilliant manager in Rafa Benitez, but a little bit controversial. So what's your aims and targets for Everton this year? Well, I think, um, you know, this club wants to, of course, compete with the, at the highest level. But I think it's, it's making sure we try and improve on last year. So make sure we get, to, you know, somewhere in, that, in those top 10. You know, I think if we can go and challenge for, for the European places, if we go and challenge for a trophy, then, you know, that's even that's even better for us. So, um, you know, I think it's improvement, making sure this club keeps moving in the right direction because it's got some exciting plans for the future. Great owner, obviously a great manager, as you say, a great fan base. So, you know, everything's in place for this club to be successful long term. Oh, brilliant. Well, we wish you all the best for this season going forward. We'll be keeping an eye on the Everton scores as we go along. Um, thank you for your time today. Um, I believe you're active on Twitter, LinkedIn, and is there anywhere else people can find you if they want to follow your career and story? Um, pretty much everywhere. Asmir1 is my, is my um, username um, on most social media platforms. You say Twitter, LinkedIn, um, Instagram. Obviously, I'll be on Facebook. So yeah, just follow me wherever. I, I'm quite active. You know, I like to do my 
my other businesses, you know, my academies, my goalkeeper product. So yeah, just check me out anywhere. And, um, you know, I love interacting with people and doing podcasts like this. So, and you know, it's, it's just a pleasure and well done to you guys. Ah, thank you very much. We really appreciate that. Thank you for watching our podcast today. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to hit that subscribe button to make sure you never miss out on the new ones we post every Monday and Wednesday. If you are interested in enrolling yourself or someone else into the British Online School, be sure to visit our website, britishonlineschool.co.uk, or you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and send us a direct message there as well. Just use the handle at Brit Online School, spelled S-C-H, and you can find all our links below. Have a fantastic day and we look forward to seeing you again soon.